universe is expanding. The distant galaxies are drifting away from one another. Later, we learn that the expansion began some 14 billion years ago with the explosive birth of the universe, the Big Bang. In 1929, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe is expanding. The distant galaxies are drifting away from one another. Later, we learn that the expansion began some 14 billion years ago with the explosive birth of the universe, the Big Bang. Everybody assumed that the rate of expansion would be slowing down due to the mutual pull of gravity between all the parts of the universe. If there is enough dark matter, its gravity would eventually bring the expansion to a stop, and the universe would then fall back on itself. In that case, everything would eventually collapse in a big crunch. On the other hand, if the universe had less dark matter, the expansion would continue forever, just getting slower and slower. Two competing teams of astronomers were observing those supernovas in distant galaxies. It turned out to be another one of those that's funny moments. In 1998, both teams independently came to the same conclusion. The expansion isn't slowing down at all. It's speeding up. This means the universe will continue to expand forever. There seems to be a mysterious force in the universe, one that overwhelms gravity on the grandest scale to push the cosmos apart. Most of the energy of the universe is bound up in this unknown force. We call it dark energy. But that name, like dark matter, is merely a code word for our ignorance. It's okay not to know all the answers. It's better to admit our ignorance than to believe answers that might be wrong. Pretending to know everything closes the door to finding out what's really there. Tonight, our ships sail into even more exotic waters. Come with me. Only two of our ships have ventured into the great dark ocean of interstellar space. The longest odyssey in all of history was launched back in 1977, NASA's Voyager 1 and 2. The Voyagers move about 40,000 miles an hour. They gave us our first close-up look at Jupiter's great red spot, a hurricane three times the size of Earth, and one that's been raging since at least 1644, when it was first observed. For all we know, it could be thousands of years old. The Voyagers discovered the first active volcano on another world, on Jupiter's moon, Io and an ocean beneath the icy surface of the moon Europa. With at least twice as much water as we have here on Earth. The Voyagers dared to fly across Saturn's rings and revealed that they were made of hundreds of thin bands of orbiting snowballs. On Saturn's giant moon, Titan, Voyager detected an atmosphere four times denser than Earth's. That hinted at the existence of hydrocarbon seas on Titan, which we later confirmed. Voyager 2 gave us our first portrait of the outermost planet, Neptune. Where the winds roar at a thousand miles per hour. And its moon, Triton, where geysers of boiling nitrogen shoot five miles high. Voyager successfully completed its mission of discovery to the outer planets, but its odyssey into the darkness was just beginning. 35 years after its launch, Voyager 1 became the first of our spacecraft to enter an uncharted realm. The sun is constantly shooting out streams of charged particles in all directions, moving at a million miles an hour. This solar wind blows a vast magnetic bubble, our heliosphere, that extends beyond the outer planets. It pushes out against the thin gas of interstellar space. There's a border where one ends and the other begins. 
Voyager 1 reported back to Earth that its detectors were being pummeled by more and more cosmic rays. Until then, we didn't know where the interstellar ocean began. Voyager 1 pressed on past a boundary we had never crossed before. The heliosphere shields us from most of the deadly cosmic rays. When stormy solar winds blow, this zone of protection grows. In calm solar weather, it shrinks. When a star goes supernova in our galactic neighborhood, the debris from the exploded star pushes the heliosphere back towards the sun. If it's strong enough to push it all the way back to Earth's orbit, our planet gets a radioactive bath of supernova debris. 